NASA's return to the moon will require lots of heavy lifting. But don't expect the astronauts to do all the work. NASA scientists and engineers have been digging a little bit deeper to come up with resourceful ways to make the most of lunar resources. We'll introduce you to a major part of NASA's future workforce next on Real World. When astronauts go to work and live on the moon, NASA wants them to be as productive as possible, exploring and doing science experiments. That's why they're turning lots of the mundane work over to autonomous robots. Some of those robots got put to the test recently in Hawaii, a Mauna Kea volcano, as part of NASA's in-situ resource utilization program. We're here to try out different ideas for extracting oxygen from lunar regolith. Tom Simon is the ISRU Project Office Chief Engineer. This particular location has several advantages. Uh, it has a, a unique characteristic that it has a volcanic ash that's very similar to the regolith on the moon. NASA wants to take moon dirt, or regolith, and pull the oxygen out for astronauts to breathe. By adding hydrogen, they could also make water. We've been evolving our technology development effort where we're now trying it out at the outpost scale so we could support a crew of four on the surface of the moon all year long and help close the life support loop so that you never have to send a tank of oxygen and water to the moon again. To do that, NASA needed to come up with a way to get the regolith to the reactor. Early in the design process, engineers calculated how much regolith would be needed to sustain a crew. We were asked to deliver about 18 loads per 24-hour period to produce 1,000 kilograms of oxygen. John Caruso is the project lead for ISRU and Human Robotics at NASA's Glenn Research Center. And we also had to assume that 30% of the days we could not work. That was the dark periods. So 70% of the time we would be working. We could go out for eight hours and deliver about every half hour a load. We would also have to take away the spent regolith and dump it in a site. And then after every eight hours, we were charged for two hours. That left two hours of margin. In case anything needed done, we had two hours to spare. So in every 12-hour shift, we had two hours of spare, two hours of charging, and eight hours of work. NASA has come up with three possible designs. Furthering the design process, they brought two excavating rovers to Hawaii for testing and evaluation. One, called Kratos, was developed by NASA. That's the full-size rover for what we need for oxygen extraction. It's a tracked vehicle. An innovative aspect of it is it uses a bucket in the middle, almost the size of its body, to be able to go and collect the material, carry it back to our plants. It's going to drive up the ramp, and we're going to watch it drop the sample into a hopper. Kratos does prospecting work as well. There's a unit that's attached to this uh, that uh, sets down, detects the mineralogy of the soil. If it's good, we pick it up and utilize it. If it's not, we can move to another site. Another robot that made the trip to Hawaii was developed by Lockheed Martin. It uses a bucket drum to scoop up the soil and then delivers it to a reactor. The device works by lowering the bucket drum to the ground and rotating forward to pick it up. It works quite effectively and can work quite effectively on compacted soil as well, which is very nice. It loads up the drum about halfway and then it lifts it up over its back. It's an, it's an overlift system and then it reverses the flow and deposits the regolith into the bin. Both systems come in at under 100 kilograms. They require about the same power as a 100 watt light bulb. NASA is also considering a third excavator, the Chariot Rover. Evaluation is another part of the design process. Scientists and engineers will examine the data from testing done in Hawaii. That, along with the information based on final surface design, will allow them to refine the design until they get exactly what they need for the lunar mission. After many tests and careful consideration, the best solution will be chosen, and that machine will be taken to the moon. Keep track of this and all of NASA's exploration missions at www.nasa.gov.